Hello and welcome to episode number 293 of the TW2A2A Challenge Run. This is going to be Smackdown for week 4 of September 2022. We're finally about to exit the month of September as we head in towards the Clash at the Castle show, October week 2. And yeah, we learned our main event last week. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, one more time at Clash of the Castle. If Roman Reigns wins, Seth Rollins is gone from WWE. But tonight, we've got a stack show in itself. We've got, I think, Utami Haishishta versus Dakota Kai. We've got um, Warden defending the United States Championship against Ricochet. With the winner of that match defending the belt against Bobby Lashley at Clash of the Castle. We've also got... Um, Something else, which is oh, um, the Miz and Grayson Waller against L.A. Knight and a mystery partner, if he can find one, and of course the debut of Le French Connection. Without any more further ado, let's jump straight into the show. We start with a recap of the the closing segment from last week. And then burn it down. Out comes Seth Rollins to open the show. And he's like, ha! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday Night Freaking Smackdown. And as you can see, I am your guide for tonight, Seth Freaking Rollins. And let me tell you, I am in a jovial mood today, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you didn't see last week's episode of Smackdown, <laughs> well, guess who's got another shot at Roman Reigns? That's right, I do. <laughs> because you see here, I know Roman's game better than he does. I know that targeting his pride was the way forward. I knew that if I came over to his, I was on his show, and I caused havoc, there'd be no other choice than to give me what I wanted. And now I finally have that at Clash at the Castle, and I've got a chance to challenge Roman Reigns and his ego alongside the WWE Championship. Now, those of you who preach the lessons of the Tribal Chief, the big dog as I know him, you'll know exactly why he added that stipulation back on our match at the Royal Rumble. Because he knows that he can't beat Seth freaking Rollins all by himself. <laughs> so he had to get his family to do his dirty work and screw me out of that match at the Royal Rumble. Well, there ain't going to be no family in Cardiff, Roman. <laughs> and... It's going to end the exact same way every other match before between us has ended before. And that's with me standing on top. Me as the WWE Champion. Out comes Champa, uh, And he's like, Seth, Seth, you're, you're talking a lot of shit in that ring right now. But here's, here's, here's the situation. Here's why. Here's the reality that you've set up for yourself here. Johnny, my like my tag team partner, my champ tag team championship partner, Johnny, he's not here tonight because he got provoke unprovokedly assaulted last week by an idiot in a hoodie and a lead pipe. Now, obviously, you you had your message, you had your method to your madness, and I can't sit here and say, Seth Rollins, I'm so angry that you did what you did, because obviously I understand why you did what you did. That's a very much out of the Tommaso Champa Blackheart playbook. But you tried. You know, you tried to stop me four times last week. You tried to put that chair on my neck. You tried to end my career. You know the injuries I've been through, Seth. That would have ended my career. So I can't let you sit back and be Seth freaking Rollins, the top guy here on SmackDown. I put on the fight of my life against Roman Reigns. If anything, I believe that I earned his respect last week. I can't say the same about you. Because I thought I respected you, but it turns out... You're a coward. Seth goes, well, <laughs> happy Friday to you too, Tommaso, you know. If that's how you really feel, why don't you... Do you fancy joining Gargano in the hospital? Because I don't mind taking you on right now. 
and I'll stomp you into that mat as many times as I tried last week. And, yeah. And Tommaso's like, well, why do we have to wait? Why don't we do this right now? Tommaso takes his shirt off or whatever. And then we get the opening match, which will be Seth Rollins taking on Champa for an 86. And Champa loses again. He's lost two weeks in, on the spin, but he got a 19 and 86 against the, the top two guys in the entire company. So he'll, he's fine. This has helped him a lot. Seth beats him with a stomp in 1654. And yeah, 88 for Seth Rollins, 73 for Champa. And after the match, he tries to go stomp Champa again, but then Pierce comes out and he's like, Seth, 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 no. You've got what you wanted. Okay. I didn't put the segment in, that's why I'm doing it now. I just realised when I was halfway through that promo that I didn't put the segment in. And he's like, you got what you wanted, so now, you're still suspended here. Leave. If you put your hands on Champa anymore, the match of Clash of the Castle is off. Because Roman's coming back here later on tonight and I don't need shit hitting the fan any more than it has and he goes you know for once in your goddamn life Pierce I'll do what you say I'll respect you and your authority because you did me a solid and Seth leaves and Champa gets off without having his neck stomped on a chair <laughs> next next segment Ezekiel is pacing around you know and then Kayla approaches him because Ezekiel, you know, we saw your brother Elias at Battle of the Bands two weeks ago. He's like, yes, I know. I saw what happened. It's it's Alistair and his damn house, you know. They seem to think that my brother is trying to run from them. But if I know my brother, my brother is friends with people. He's friends, they're, they're his friends. So I don't know what's going on in his head, but less assured that they can't be doing that. They can't. I don't know where they've taken my brother, and I'm going to find him. And then Andrews and Webster and Danny Luna on behalf of the House of Black approach, and they're like, "You know, it's weird. You, you say that you don't know where your brother is because <laughs> it's funny. We lost him too, like that trickster, you know. But here you are, right in front of my eyes, Ezekiel. And he's like, "What are you exactly? Are you accusing me of?" They're like, come on, just come home, Elias, we know. It's like, what, I'm, I'm not Elias, that's my brother. And he goes, come on, cut the crap and we'll take you back right now. And he goes, no, you don't get it. That's my brother, and if you don't believe me, I'll knock some sense into you next week, Andrews. And he goes, okay, fine, whatever it takes to get our friend back in the house. So Ezekiel and Mark Andrews set for next week. <laughs> Grace and Waller and the Miz come to the ring. And the Miz is like, well, oh, they're, actually, no, they're already in the ring. Like, that backstage segment happens and then we cut to the ring and they're already in there with microphones. He says, well, well, well. It turns out, you know, that the million dollar megastar L.A. Knight doesn't have many friends backstage on SmackDown. I wonder how that could have happened. And, Mrs. and Grayson's like, well, I'll tell you what happened. He's, you know, nobody wants to team with that big idiot because they know he sucks. And Missy goes, well, I couldn't have said it any better myself, Grayson Waller. Now you see, you, my friend, are the next generation here on SmackDown. I'm molding you into my image because people want... To have me as their mentor, nobody wants L.A. Knight's help, and I can't, frankly, can't blame them because he's shown up now. He's he's got no friends, so he's not even going to show up for this match tonight. Then his music hits. He goes, "Miz, Miz, Miz, why don't you shut up for once in your life?" And he, let me talk to you. You know. Yes, it's true. The million dollar megastar L.A. Knight did not find a tag team partner for tonight's match, but that ain't going to stop him whipping your ass two on one. Yeah. So, we're going at it anyway. Two-on-one handicap, I guess. LA Knight against Grayson Waller on The Miz. And obviously he's overwhelmed. Because there's, there's two of them on one of him. Naturally, he becomes like overwhelmed eventually. By the two heels beating him down. When the crowd cheers, when somebody runs out from the back. 
Santos Escobar, of all people, runs out. And he like, gets on the apron. And he like offers out a handshake or a, for a tag. And LA Knight looks at him and he's like, okay, whatever. Tags him in. Then Santos runs wild, does his shtick. And then hits the Phantom Driver on the Miz to win for the team. El Knight and Santos Escobar don't work well as a team. That's fine. This was just more so a thing to establish Escobar as a face than it was for um, them to be a tag team. Like, that's not going to be a thing. It's a one-off, so it's fine. <laughs> 83 for Miz, 58 for Waller, 68 for Santos, and a 75 for LA Knight. But yeah, LA Knight, he, had a, no, he didn't find a tag team partner, but Santos Escobar came to his aid. What's his shtick? What's he up to? We then cut to the barbershop. Cameron Grimes is... Oh, Cameron Grimes. Carmelo Hayes is going, you know, trick Mr. Money in the bank's getting another paid vacay. You know? Ever since I embarrassed that fool Seth Rollins at SummerSlam and then I embarrassed Daniel Bryan on the microphone. Suddenly anyone ain't booking Mello. And Trick's going, you know, Melo, it's fine because you got that bunny in the back of your case. You know you're the next WWE champion. It's fine. You don't need you don't need the, them fools' approval, Melo. Because, you know, Trick means you. We're going to go far here in WWE. We're going to make it to the very top. And there ain't nobody holding us back. Not Daniel Bryan, not Seth Rollins, not Roman Reigns, none of them. Because I got this briefcase and everyone knows Tricky don't miss. Not Tricky. <laughs> Mellow, don't miss. It's got Tricky Willie on the mind, I'm sorry. Uh, everyone knows Mellow, don't miss. Because that's all it is and that's all it's ever gonna be. And I'll be the A champion one day soon. It don't matter who got it. Because I'll beat you all. Like I said when I first arrived, your time is done. Mellow's time is up and coming. And that starts when I want it to start. You tell him, Mello. Well, you see, it's fine that Mello, his time is up. He's got that money in the back briefcase, but the time of Trick Williams, Trick, Tricky Willie, baby, his time is coming up any time that he's soon, and I need to really get my foot in in that ring. So next week, you're going to see Tricky Willie one-on-one -on -one in singles action, baby. <laughs> so Trick Williams um, step into the ring next week against somebody. We don't know who. Segment. Candace comes out of the doctor's room, which obviously that's where Champa is. Johnny's not here this week, as Champa said. And then she bumps into Alba Fire and the Regal Coalition. She comes out and she's like, yes, can I help you? And Alba's like, so, what's going on in there, Candace? She goes, you know, Champa, Sephiroth sort of attacked him, you know, it's my, I guess while Johnny's not here, it's my duty to look after his partner. And I'll go, you know, I've noticed you recently, Candice. You're trying to you're trying to do it so that nobody can see you, but I see right through you. And she goes, What am I doing now? She goes, You Yeah, picking up all these wins on heat, you know, you're you've become Mrs. Heat in a way. And I don't like it. And Candice is like, Okay. Like you're trying to become the contender for the Liberty Championship. You want to be the next Liberty Champion, Candice Lorray. And she goes, Well, yeah, that would be great, but you know, I've got to earn that shot. And then Cat Alpha Fire sort of like pins her up against the wall with the bat and goes, Well, that shot is mine, Candice. You can back off. If I've got to step right over you, crush you under my boot on my way to taking that title from Shotzi, that's just what I'm going to have to do. Okay? So stay out of my way. And then they will walk off. And then the Grizzled Young Veterans sort of stay behind. And I'm like, yeah. tell your husband, I can't do my Scouse accent, okay. <clears throat> Liverpool, tell your husband that the grizzled young veterans have got their eyes on him and little champer in there because we're coming to be the Smackdown Tag Team Champions. So, a lot of championship threats from the Regal Coalition here. Alba, you know, still trying to get the Liberty title. Obviously sees Candace as the biggest threat for it. And then the, the Grizzle Jung veterans trying to be the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Oh, 86. I wasn't expecting this to do this good. 
But Ricochet is overpowered in this game for some reason, so I should have. And even though that it got an 86, there's a lack of psychology. But Warden retains again. Big power bump to Ricochet. Probably turns him inside out. You know, to make difference number three of the US title. He's really making that belt right now. And it's making him. He's a star now. So 78 for Warden, 93 for Ricochet. Which means, more importantly than that, as is justified, as is um, solidified here, Clash of the Castle. You talk, want to talk about big meaty men slapping meat? Warden will defend the United States Championship in Cardiff against the almighty Bobby Lashley. And MVP is there gassing him up. He's going, that's a big fight, baby. The, the almighty Bobby Lashley. What a big match this is going to be. Shut your dumb ass up. All that. All that. The, the MVP classics. <laughs> you know? Here's a segment that I knew would do bad because I think the Creed brothers are really, like, underrated in this game. They've got, like, awful, like, charisma stats, which I think is harsh. They are charismatic dudes. But they're obviously in their little training room and holding their heads in shame, like, Brutus is probably punching the heavy bag aggressively, trying to get his frustrations out in the background. And Julius is like, I don't know what happened, Brutus. You know, we were on top of the world when we were with Gable. But last week we lost Gulak and Gulak and Oni. They cheated, but we lost it in the end nevertheless. And Brutus then stops. He's like, I don't know what it is, Julius, you know. What are we lacking? And Julius goes, we're lacking that motivation, that fire. And then a knock at the door. And Julius answers it, and he's like, what is this? And he goes, it's a gift. Does some random delivery man just hands a box to the Creed brothers and leaves. And then Julius opens it, and then Brutus looks over his shoulder like, what is it? And obviously, we don't see what it is, but it's something they're intrigued by. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Pat McAfee is in the ring. He's in the ring. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, to my left. Local stars straight out of Dallas, Texas. Romeo Nightingale and Robin Christopher. And they're like, woo. And he goes, boys, boys, boys. They got a big, big time match here to try and make a name here on SmackDown. Try and win a contract with your WWE. How are you feeling? And Romeo's like, you know, I know when the fight comes, I'm ready. Nobody knows what I can do when fighting. I'm the best fighter I know. And then Robin takes the microphone and he goes, and we're going to show up and show the world that we're the best damn duo here in Dallas, Texas. And we're going to win that WWE contract by beating whoever we've got to face tonight. Up top, Robin and Romeo high five. Then we hear, like, the sounds of some French music. And he's like, oh, no, 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 monsieur McAfee. Allow moi to take over and out come obviously David and Violet Martin onto the ramp there's like a French flag on the Titan drum behind them and the music stopped at this point and <laughs> David Martin he soaks in the audience and he's like Madame Moselle et Madame Mademoiselles <laughs> You are now about to witness le grand début of Le French Connection. Allow moi to introduce to you the greatest tag team out of the United States of America. But they are, let make no mistake about it, the greatest ancestors of Francais. You may recognize them from NXT, but now they are not the men you must you used to know. They are the prize fighters of Francais. Allow me to introduce my co our cousins, Idris Inofe et Malik Blade. Outcome Idris and Malik. Idris is in his normal gear, but like, I imagine it's white tights with like red and blue 
designs on it and instead of that cape he has that's like just a french flag <laughs> i think that'd be funny and malik you know he's got the sweater vest on and like it's either, i was thinking either a french flag or like like what a mime would wear like black and white stripes <laughs> and, and maybe one of them's got a beret i don't know but la french connection malik is an adequate frenchman and um Edris's gimmick is instead of the epitome of excellence is l'epitome d'excellence and they're taking on Romeo and Robin here and the match isn't going to score very well 32 yep <laughs> Idris pins Romeo with le french finale or some some other name of their move like that but here they are le french connection are here they beat Robin Christopher and Romeo Nightingale 43 for Malik Blade, 44 for Edris Inofe, 27 for Robin Christopher, and a 10 for Romeo Nightingale. Romeo Nightingale was the weak link. He was worse at fighting than Robin Christopher. That is funny. And not true. But, but yes. Unfortunately, our beloved popular local talents here probably did not earn a contract right now. But La French Connection have arrived on Le Bleu brand. And um good to know there's no negative chemistry. One of them's got David Mar one of David, sorry, and one of them's got VLA. But the neither of them had negative chemistry. I might swap them around next time to see if they have anyone has any positive chemistry, but it's good to know there is at least a combination where I won't get dinged for it. Seventy nine. That's fine for a main event. I would have liked better, but you know, no story. Well, it was a story, but apparently it wasn't very hot. Utami and Dakota goes 18 18. Utami defeats Dakota with a Samoan drop. 79 for Utami, 80 for Dakota. So I guess the 79 rounds out with, a, with their match ratings. We'll have it. And obviously, after the match, Utami's celebrating when she's jumped by Bailey. And <laughs> Bailey and Dakota then start attacking um, Utami. When Kyrie runs out of the back with the SmackDown Women's title, chases off the heels, and then grabs a microphone, and she's like, "You two, you two run. How about you two take on me and Utami tag team match at Clash at the Castle?" And Bailey's like, oh, "Off mic." She's like, "You're on, bitch. You're on. We'll see you in Cardiff." Then Bailey and I imagine go through the crowd and then as Utami and Kairi leave Roman Reigns' music hits and he comes out and they sort of like cross on the ramp as Roman comes out to speak to his crowd to close out the night but before then next week big show we've got <laughs> Candice LeRae taking on Alba Fire in singles action where um, there's a, a championship opportunity for the Liberty title on the line because they are apparently the two top contenders. Candice's wins on Heat have actually got her recognition and Alba Fire, I guess, just thinks she, she deserves a title shot because she attacked the champion a couple of weeks ago on her SmackDown debut. Also announced is Ezekiel returning to the ring to take on Mark Andrews of the House of Black in a bizarre match in which the House of Black are trying to get their, their friend back. We then have the grizzled, grizzled, sorry, grizzled young veterans against Top Dollar and Ashanti the Adonis of Hit Row in a SmackDown tag team title number one contenders match. Because, you know, they wanted, they, they declared for a title shot and I guess Hit Row are up near the top of the rankings as well. And as of course we also heard, perhaps the biggest news of them all, Trip Williams in single action next week. And then moving on to two big matches from the blue brand we had announced for Clash of the Castle tonight. The first, big in every sense of the word, Warden taking on the almighty Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Two big meaty men bumping all kinds of meat in Cardiff, Wales. And then, non-title action, but a big tag team women's match, Bailey and Dakota Kai are going to team up to take on Utami Hayashishta and Kairi Sane. 
who have formed a strong alliance against these two in recent weeks, so that should be fun. But the big dog is waiting for us in the ring. And he goes, Dallas, Texas. Acknowledge me. So, I didn't come out, you didn't come out here to hear me ramble about all sorts of things. Oh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it happened because you saw them on the screen during the um, Kyrie and Jutami segment. But Jimmy Jimmy Uso and Jacob Fatu are now back following the attack from Seth Rollins. However many weeks ago it was. He goes, it's nice to have, you know, the bloodline back in here on SmackDown as a unit. You know, Seth, I, I respect your hustle. You went, You don't know when to quit. You came in a Maya, my room, my locker room, the Bloodlines locker room. I don't know how you got in, because only families allowed in that locker room. But somehow, you took out Jimmy, you took out Jacob, just to get in my head. Now, Tribal Chief, he's above letting people rest and stay rent-free in his head. But Seth Rollins, you know. He's that little rat that you can't get off. And it's going to be nice to know that a clash at the castle in just over two weeks, I get to smash him one last time and send him on his merry way. I don't know what's waiting for him on the other side. Maybe some other wrestling company will pick him up. That ain't my business. Hey, Seth, say hi to Marks for me. <laughs> now, moving on. To other business. Uso! Jay Uso interrupts. We have not seen him in a year. He had a major concussion, but he's back here on SmackDown, and the bloodline is full on. Roman is shocked to see him, and Jey Uso gets in the ring. He's he's kind of pissed off because he's Jey Uso, that's what he does. You know, he's a hater. He gets in the ring, he's like, Suppus! This is off mic, I imagine. And then, like, he goes up to Roman, doesn't hug him, he just walks up to him, and then Roman will hug him, and Jey would just embrace the hug. And then obviously he'd hug Jimmy, who'd be ecstatic to see him. And he'd hug Paul Heyman. And then he'd take the microphone and he'd go, Ah, oh, Oos. I missed y'all, Oos. You know, I had to sit back a whole year in my bloodline running roughshod. Smackdown. WWE Champion Roman Reigns. But I had to come back now, Oos. I can't let this go on any longer. And Roman's like, whoa, 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 Jay, Jay, Jay. I'm happy to see you too, but what are you, what are you talking about? And Jay goes, listen to yourself, Oos. We talk about Seth Rollins, you know. How did he get in that locker room? He can't get in that locker room. There's only families that are in that locker room, Oos. And he stares at Jacob Fatu. And he goes, how, would he, how else would he get in unless a member of the family let him in? And Roman goes, what are you implying here, Jay, you know? J Jimmy and Jacob, they were laid out, you know? I don't know how Seth Rollins did it. Maybe you, maybe you were the... And Jimmy Jay goes, don't you blame me, Oos. It's him, pointing at Jacob Fatu. And he, Jacob's like, what, what the fuck do you mean, bruh? <laughs> He's like, there's a rat in this goddamn bloodline, Oos. And I want, to, I want that branch cut off the tree. And Roman goes, relax, Jay, Jay, Jay. I understand you're stressed, you know, maybe you're still a little bit loopy, but like, you're coming out here, you're trying to stir up trouble in my bloodline, Jay. Now, I, just like you, have no idea how Seth Rollins managed to lay these two out, you know, wise man's looking into it, but if you're gonna come out here, you're gonna fall in line, Jay. I ain't got time for you to come out here and start disrespecting me or anyone in my bloodline. And Jay goes, I'm not going to disrespect anyone, Oos. He's the one disrespecting us. He's taking advantage of you. 
And Jacob, he's finally snatched at the microphone and he goes, Listen here, Jay. You know, I'm not taking advantage of Roman. You know. I would die for my tribal chief. And the fact that you think that I'm scheming behind our family's back. You know, maybe you're the one trying to cause a wedge here. Maybe you've got a problem with me. And Heyman's obviously stressing about going, Oh my god, what's going on? My tribal chief, sort this out, my tribal chief. And he goes, Listen here. I'm going to need y'all to get on the same page. Because I don't know if you noticed. This weekend marks my one year as the WWE Champion. So next week, we're rolling a Bloodline one year anniversary celebration in honor of the Tribal Chief. And I'd hate to have to ban all of y'all from being there with me. But if you don't get on your best behavior and don't quit embarrassing me, that will be what happens. Jay, it's great to have you back. You know, we missed you. Jimmy missed you. You can go and become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions and complete the Bloodline Prophecy. But Jacob, he's been here just as long as you have. To accuse him of being a worm and a dead branch on this blood, this bloodline family tree, Jay. Maybe you forgot who runs things around here. Cause it ain't you. It's me. Okay. And if you all can't be trusted, not to fight amongst each other, then maybe Seth was right. Maybe there'll be no family at Clash at the Castle. Because I don't want you screwing things up for me. You understand? And Jake Fatu was like, yes, my tribal chief. And he goes, Jay, do you understand? And then Jay glares at Jacob Fatu and he glares back at Roman. He's like, I understand, my tribal chief. And then Roman smiles. He's like, great. So now we can move on. Strong as ever. Perhaps even stronger than we've ever been before. Because we, you know what we are, Jay? And he takes them back and he's like, we the ones. F- fingers get pointed up in the air and then the show ends as Roman's music plays as he holds the title up high. So Jay Uso, finally here. He's finally returned. And, you know, he's still, he's going to be angry, you know. We're keeping that Jay Uso dynamic. But he appears to have problems with Jacob Fatu. Like, he's accused him of, I guess, staging the attack on him and Jimmy. That's, I don't know what's going on here. We're left with more answers than, or more questions than answers as he's returned. But the bloodline for now, in terms of numbers, strong as ever. Stronger than ever, if anything. The show ends. 83 rated show. That's fine. I will take that. This is a very bizarre show, you know. We had the French Connection. We had um, Creed Brothers thing here. We had Cut, Tr- Trick Williams brought this segment down. I mean, yeah, just a bunch of like people that don't normally speak were doing stuff on this show. I kind of like it, you know, because we still had Roman and Seth to carry, like bookend it. Anyway, following Unforgiven, Rey Mysterio is still the cruiserweight champion, and we need. To find his next challenger. Let's see if we will do that. Or get any kind of hint of that. On Velocity. We open up Heat with a promo. Which isn't normally Heat. Thing. But Ray and Dominic are out. And he's talking about how he was. So proud to make the first event of the new Cruiserweight title. At. Um, Unforgiven. When he beat Angel Gaza. And it's time to look forward to who will be next in line to face him for the belt. He's interrupted by Drew Gulak and Tony Lorcan. And they're like, Ray, you know, congratulations, you are an icon of the Cruiserweight scene. But, me and Oni and Big Thatch, we've got a problem with you. Because you, obviously, are you're a generational talent, you know. A once-in-a-lifetime luchador. 
but you be, be getting becoming so popular in the United States led to a breed of athletes. Let's call them athletes, even though that's being generous. Of people who try to emulate your style. And that has led to some of the most pathetic excuses for professional wrestling I've ever seen. You know, me and Oni, we're real shooters, you know, we're real catch wrestlers. But the, the, the entire company now is filled with people who idolized you. And people like Jeff Hardy and people like that. That's detrimental to everything. And I want that title, you know. Oni wants that title to take back the vision of Cruiserweight Wrestling. And then Dominic steps up and he's like, well, why don't we have a tag match tonight? Me and my dad against you two goofs. So that's the main event. Ray and Dominic against Drew Gulak and Oni Lorcan. A 79 rated op- I knew this would go hard because I say it to steal the show. But yeah. This is why the trio's ba- batches are happening, you know. The Legado trio of Malik, Cruz, and Joaquin defeat MSK, which is Tr- Leslie Young, Wesley, and Tristan Ellison. And Malik pins Tristan with the Malik driver. 77 for Joaquin, 75 for Cruz, 89 for Malik, 63 for Tristan, and for Leslie, and a 71 for Wesley. Yeah. Banger, like a high flying, action packed trio's cruiserweight match to open the show. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> then we come down to a 40 rated match. Sensei gets another win here on Velocity. They're quickly picking up a lot of wins. I don't know if they're going to be a title contender or anything because they haven't got much popularity and are only scoring a 73, a 37, or 33 even. I was looking at Jiro. But yes, yeah, Sensei and Jiro. Gets a 40, but it's actually kind of good. Goes 10 minutes. 37 for Jiro, 33 for Sensei, who wins with the Gumu Gumu no Boomerang. 75 rated filler tag team match. Kushida, who you haven't seen in a while because he's in NXT Japan now. He's like the the veteran of that. Like, the gatekeeper of NXT Japan, basically. But he still comes in here for matches from time and again. He beats Lindsay Dorado in 10 minutes of 51 with a Kushida lock. 73 for Kushida, 65 for Lindsay, and a 75 for the match, which I guess is very good. Then we get the main event to get to 79 as well. Um, Oni pins, Dom- or submits Dominic apparently, with the half strangle hold. A 67 for Oni Lorcan, 77 for both Ray and Gulak, and a 68 for Dominic. But yes, the catch boys. End the show on top because Oni submits Dominic with the harsh strangle hold, and apparently Thatcher was out there at ringside. Um, he's not a cruiserweight, so I didn't put him on the show in the opening promo, but he was mentioned. But he is cutting weight to become a lightweight, so obviously once that happens, he'll start wrestling on Velocity. But that ends the show, gets us a seventy-six, and yeah, that's a pretty fine episode of Velocity. We now end the month of September, finally, and move on to October, where there's two pay-per-views in that month. Clash of the Castle, September, Saturday week, or Saturday week to October, and then either Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember, week four is the One Night in Tokyo special from Japan. But up next, following this, is the next episode of Raw, and I will see you then.